What if I told you that every single line that you've ever marked on a chart is wrong? No matter if you're using indicators, smart money concepts, support and resistance, supply and demand, anything and everything, every single line that you've marked is completely wrong. And furthermore, what if I told you that by the end of this video, I'm going to show you something that will improve your ability for your technical analysis to be accurate by magnitudes. Now I've been day trading for over four years now, profitably for a couple. This secret that I'm going to let you in on today took me a long time to figure out. And as far as I know, it's not that common knowledge. Now, as I said before, it does not matter what kind of technical analysis you use. This video will 100% guaranteed be beneficial for you. However, with that being said, if you want to learn the technical analysis that I trade with, you can go ahead and join my free Discord down in the description. Now, the Discord is free. However, there's a Patreon where all the educational content lives, hundreds of hours of it. Now, if you're not interested in the Patreon, you still may want to join the Discord and stay in it. And that's because I run frequent giveaways for tiers on the Patreon and also cash giveaways as well. With that being said, and now that that's out of the way, let's go over the charts and explain why every single line that you've ever drawn is wrong. Alrighty, so as I mentioned, this is going to be applicable to anybody who's using any type of technical analysis. So what that means right off the rip is that it's not actually about the system you're using and it's not actually about the levels that you're marking. More so, it's about the chart you're using. All right, so let's take this as an example. Let's say you have a bunch of different assets you want to do technical analysis on. You want to trade, you want to chart, right? You have gold, you have NASDAQ, you have Euro USD. Well, when I go to look for the chart for gold and I type in gold on trading view, well, we have a bunch of golds, right? We have trading view, we have capital.com, we have MXC, we have velocity, uh, whatever this is. And then we also have the futures charts. And then we also have XAU USD and then Inside of XAUUSD, we have, well, do I use Awanda? Do I use Forex.com? Do I use Pepperstone? And all of these are different data feeds. And what you'll notice is that they're all different charts. They all have different price action. Like the price action on XAUSD on Forex.com is going to be completely different than the price action on gold futures. And later in the video, I'm going to be showing you examples of this to further the point of why what I'm talking about right now is so critically important. Same thing with NASDAQ, right? You have NQ, which is the futures chart. You have uh, NAS 100 on Pepperstone, FXCM, uh, Forex.com, Oanda, or you have QQQ. That's also the NASDAQ. So which one is it? And how do I know that I'm utilizing a data feed that's actually accurate. And this is the crux of the problem here. Now, this should ring alarm bells in your head like crazy, okay? If you're looking to chart NASDAQ, for example, and there's so many different brokers with so many different price feeds and all the price feeds are a little bit different, it should start to ring something in your head about, well, which one is right? Which one is the source of truth? Which one is the main one that everything else is following rather than you trading one of the branch ones that is following something else? Okay, because if you're trading the main one that everything else is following, then and only then is your technical analysis going to work to its full capacity. But if you're doing technical analysis on a chart whose price feed and whose data feed is not right, then your technical analysis is overall going to be wrong. It's not going to be correct at all because you're not seeing the right price action. And technical analysis is a function of price action. You apply your technical analysis to price action. So if your price action is wrong, your technical analysis is going to be wrong. So the point of this video is to walk you through and tell you which data feed is actually correct. And there's actually a very easy answer to this. And it's the same answer for every single asset. And the answer is futures, the futures chart. If an asset has a futures chart, you need to be doing technical analysis on the futures data feed because that is the only source of truth. And what do I mean by this? Okay. Well, quite simply, and I'm going to leave a link to this watch list down in the description. I have it for everything, Forex, uh, metals, energies, uh, equity index, futures, cryptocurrency, whatever you want. And I have different sections for them. So like if I want to look at, um, for example, equity index futures, I have a watch list for that. Like I said, those watch lists will be down in the description um, for free. So what do I mean about futures being the source of truth? Well, this is what I mean. Let's go over to something like gold to illustrate this better. 
So let's take this example with gold and I'll be running through other examples as well, where on the left we have the gold futures chart and on the right we have the XAU USD chart. Okay, so many times if people want to trade gold, they go to the XAU USD chart because this is the chart that shows up on your broker most of the time. And this is really the big problem. Because this chart shows up on your broker, the default assumption is that, hey, this is the chart that shows up on my broker. This is the chart that I should be using for trading. When in reality, you're getting a completely skewed, completely wrong data feed by using this chart. Whereas the futures chart is going to be the correct data feed. As in anything that happens on the future chart is going to be the real thing that actually happened here. And by the way, whenever you're using futures uh, in general, you need to go down to the right of TradingView, um, especially with anything on the watch list, anything that ends with a one exclamation mark, that's the continuous contract, you need to turn on B adjust and turn off set. If you leave B adjust off, then you get wrong price action. And if you look, interestingly enough, what you'll notice oftentimes is that if you turn B adjust off on the futures chart, all of a sudden it looks really similar to uh, the gold chart. But the secret here and the key to elevating your technical analysis is to turning that B adjust on. And now you have the accurate data feed that price is actually going to work off of. So let's look through a lot of the differences just on this chart. On the gold chart, at the very beginning here, we actually swept those lows. On XAU USD, we never reached into those lows. Okay, well that's one. Okay, well what about right away next? On the gold chart, we dug into the midpoint of this wick as we came down. On the XAU USD chart, we just tested into the high of it. Well, that's weird. That's different. Whereas here, you would you would expect it to go into the midpoint of the wick for a magnitude of different reasons. But on XAUUSD, you only touch the high. Okay, strange, right? Kind of strange. On gold, this push up never broke through the high. On gold on this side, this push up absolutely broke through the high. Interesting, right? So now, if you're looking at only XAUUSD, you'd be sitting here thinking like, well, we actually broke through the high. It's uh, this is going to rip when in reality this just pulls back and it doesn't actually break through the high until much later, right? Um, here's another one. You see this low right here on the chart? We go substantially below this and, and even more so we get all the way down into this low uh, that we dig down into. And if you're looking at things like liquidity or things like that, that makes a lot of sense for price to go run those lows. But then on the XAUSD chart, we never even reach that low. We never even reach that low. It makes no sense. The high time frame price action makes no sense, right? You would expect that this low gets swept before a run up because that's that's generally how it works. But on XAU USD, it doesn't reach down into there. It doesn't reach down into there. If we look at this, like look at the difference on the gold chart of this formation of candles versus in the, versus this formation of candles, right? Like on the gold, the actual future chart. Like we trade up into this range, we just tap up into it, we just sweep these highs, and you get this big wick that looks very weak, right? We're failing to really push above this high. It looks a lot more weak, and maybe you could use that to your advantage to say, well, potentially the market's gonna sell off here. Versus on this side, the candles like are fully full, there's no big wicks on top, it doesn't look that weak, the candles are just formed differently. Um, you actually closed right at this fair value up, or on this one you held it, right? There's there's a huge amount of differences, a huge amount of differences. And I will tell you with a large degree of certainty that if you just use the futures chart for all your assets, your technical analysis is gonna start making a lot more sense and it's gonna start working substantially better. So on the left here, we have Euro FX futures. This is the chart, this is the chart that you should be looking at if you're trading Euro USD. And then on the right here, we have Euro USD, Euro slash USD on FXCM. And let's break this down a little bit because this is a really interesting example. Notice these highs in the market, okay? These highs back here. And notice how this push fails to run those highs. And so if you know anything about trading, you know that we're looking for liquidity sweeps before reversals, right? So it makes sense that once this runs this high, then it rolls over. Well, imagine if you were looking at this chart on the Euro USD chart. You have these same highs sitting here. And on that first push, it actually breaks them. So if you were only looking at the Euro USD chart, you might sit down and say, well, that means that I need to get into a short right here because it's about to roll over. When in reality, on the actual chart that you should be using, the future chart, 
It never ran those highs. So what does it do? It runs again. And if you're just looking at EURUSD, you're going to get smoked and you're going to get you're going to get fucked over because it's going to run again. And you thought that those highs got ran when they really didn't get ran. Same thing on a lower time frame here, right? Like notice how the futures chart ran above these highs and it traded back into this level. And then the FXCM chart for EURUSD just didn't make it. It just didn't make it. It didn't run over there. And that could give you false signals. You might want to short on this one, but you might never participate on the trade on this side because you're not seeing the correct data if you're not looking at the future chart. This is why this is so critically important um, for you as a trader. You're not going to have accurate technical analysis at all if you're not doing technical analysis on the future chart. It will not happen because the future chart is is the thing that the market follows. The market does not follow your broker's data feed. The market follows the future's data feed. So a big one that I like to point to a lot because this is a very obvious one is when you look at something like Bitcoin. So BTC1 is the CME futures trade Bitcoin uh, contract and versus something like BTCUSDT.perp on Binance. That per perpetual futures is not futures. It's not. This is a complete lie uh, that's told. Now, let's just think about this normally. Bitcoin comes down on the Binance chart and trades into nothing. It trades into fucking nothing. It literally trades into nothing, okay? It doesn't trade in anything down here. Why is it stopping? Why is it holding? Well, if you look over to the Bitcoin future chart, again, with B adjust turned on, if you turn off B adjust, it's going to look just like the Binance chart. Once you turn on B adjust, this is where you get the, the superpower. This is where you get the secret right? When you turn on be adjust, you actually traded down into things. You traded down into this order block. You trade, you completely filled in this range. You traded into support, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure that there's a moving average or something that you traded down into also that wasn't just floating in the middle of nowhere right here. And that could allow you to be like, well, now Bitcoin's actually tested the bottom of its range. It's ready to actually run now. But if you're not using be adjust and you're not using futures, you might've been sitting here waiting for 11,000 to come and go. And it's never going to get to 11,000. It's never going to go down there because it's already tested the lows of the range. It's already went. But if you're only looking at the Binance perp chart, you're going to be sitting here like, oh, it's going to go down to there eventually. It's going to run down. And then you're going to get left in the fucking dust when this thing runs the all time highs because you're sitting there using the wrong chart waiting for something that's never going to happen. So oftentimes, especially on equity indexes, this observation affects the high time frame charts much more than it affects the low time frame charts. And again, the high time frame charts is the most important thing for it to not affect. You don't you don't want your high time frame charts to be wrong because then your whole idea could be wrong, right? So let's take a look at the recent price action on the monthly chart on NASDAQ, right? The left is the future chart, the right is US 100 cash from forex.com, okay? On the left, we traded down into this high right? We traded right down to the midpoint of this fair value gap. Exactly. Right. Everything's looking good for this to run, for example. And then on the, the CF, on the CFD chart, we don't even get into this high. We barely trade into this fair value gap. We completely don't trade into the uh, midpoint at all. Um, it's just, it's just not the same on futures. We come up, we hold right in this fair value gap up here on the CFD chart. We turn that inversion well, if you were looking at this, you would be like, well, this just turned inversion. Maybe it's time to go. But that fair value gap never turned inversion because, again, the market follows the futures chart. It does not follow the CFD chart. Later in time, price action comes back down. And I'll make this a better color. Price action comes back down and it retests this fair value gap as inversion. Well, if you and it, and it also hits an immediate rebalance off of this off of this candle's high on the CFD chart. You never come back down to this fair value gap. It never even gets there. And you don't trade to the high of this candle. You don't, you don't do an immediate rebounds. These are important things. These are really important things that you need to be knowing if, uh, if you're trading, because this is going to make a substantial difference in, in how you're doing technical analysis on a day by day basis. And if you're using a wrong chart, i.e. you're using the CFD chart when the asset has a future chart, you're putting yourself at a major disadvantage where your technical analysis is just going to be substantially, substantially worse than any um, 
other chart. Like you cannot be using the CFD charts. And if, if, if an asset has a future chart, you have to be using the future chart. And if you're not using the future chart, you're putting yourself at a major, major, major disadvantage with technical analysis. It's not going to work how it should. And you're going to sit there being confused because it's not working how it should. Let's take another look at Euro USD on a high time frame. So Euro USD recently, this on the left is the FXCM chart. So this is not the future chart. And then on the right is the future chart. So if you're just looking at Euro USD, you might have been like, well, we want to come down to this order block, for example. It would make sense if we do at this point in time. Um, like that would that would make sense to come down into it. Maybe we could get into this fair value gap also and yada, yada, yada. And then price just stops here. Why is it stopping there? That makes no sense, right? Well, we could look to the future chart for the answer because we actually did trade into that order block. We absolutely did trade into that order block and we absolutely did trade into this fair value gap. In fact, recent price action traded back into that fair value gap, just like recent price action got down into this wick, uh, just like recent price action got down into the wick on the low of the chart. But on the euro slash USD chart, we never traded down into it. And these are important, important, important things that if you have wrong, you're going to be getting the wrong idea uh, technical analysis wise. Just like recently, this wick up traded into what? The highest close candle in the range is the order block. Look at what this traded into. It traded into the order block on the futures chart versus over here. Th what th you would mark this as the order block because this is the highest close and that's not accurate at all. That's not accurate at all. We went way through this, way past it, barely held this. But then on the future chart, we go down. And what did we actually trade into? That order block, which is what I'm saying. And I'm using one particular way of technical analysis here. You could go on your own chart, use your own way of technical analysis, throw on indicators, throw on whatever you want. And you'll notice the same thing where only the future chart has accurate data. Only the future chart gives you technical analysis performance that you would expect out of your system. This is extremely critical. And again, I, I have to I have to say this again, but when you're using futures chart for things, you have to turn on be adjust and you have to turn off set. If, if those options are not set correctly, you're not going to have the benefits that I've been talking about this video. Now, one more thing for those of you that trade Forex, let's say you wanted to trade something like USD JPY, right? Which is a common pair that a lot of people like to trade. Um, this chart goes up. So the, the currency futures, like if I want to look at the Japanese yen futures here, this was for, <laughs> this was for the thumbnail. <laughs> um, the Japanese yen futures look like they're going the completely opposite way. They're going down, whatever. And that's because this is actually the futures for the yen. Okay. And this is an exchange rate. That's another part of this here. You're charting the actual currency here. You're charting an exchange rate. So if you want to make this look better, simply flip it upside down. And then all of a sudden you have a identical chart that is going to be accurate. It is going to be accurate, right? Yeah. Like, look, so like this is the high from August 1st that just barely got swept. And what did we trade up into? Well, we traded up into this order block and also this fair value gap. This is only a one time frame thing. So there's going to be more things here, of course. Um, traded up into this fair value gap, traded up into this high, just retested the high. And then like, if you look on the, the, uh, Forex chart, uh, USD JPY, like we went substantially lower. Like we, we basically, uh, completely filled this in. We turned this fair value gap inversion. If you were watching this on the day, you might be like, well, we just turned this inversion. Maybe that means we're going to retest it and roll over when in reality on the future chart, again, for some of these currencies, you need to flip it upside down. When in reality on the future chart, you never turn that inversion. You never even reach this lower level. Like everything looks bullish still, whereas here this started to get degraded when you started close outside of it. And that could have given you that could have given you a completely wrong outlook as to what the market's doing. So also just as a side note for currency pairs, um, sometimes they're going to be like that. Sometimes they're not. So sometimes you're going to have to flip the chart upside down. Sometimes you're not. And a lot of some currency pairs don't have a future chart. If if your currency pair that you're trading does not have a future chart, then whatever, just use the exchanges chart. But if an asset that you're trading does have a futures chart, use the futures chart. And I hope this video has persuaded you to do that. Um, TLDR of this video, you are not under any circumstances going to get accurate price action 
when you are not using the futures data. With all that being said, if you like the way that I teach or you like what I'm talking about, remember to join the Discord down in the description and I will see you guys next time.